Hey folks, uh, this lesson is, uh, we're doing a whole week of proofs. I know you're going to love it, you guys. So um, this is uh, some algebra proofs and a little bit of geometry in there also. So uh, for our integrated math two classes. Okay, so <clears throat> let's start off with the algebra. These are kind of those ones where you kind of go, duh, um, but, but these are the reasons. And so these will be the reasons that we put uh, for our justification. So the addition or subtraction property of equality. And so all of these are going to say properties of equality. So I'm not going to write that down. So uh, anyway, so what this says, if uh, if you have an equation, A equals B, and it, it doesn't have to be something, you know, like a, uh, a one term over here and a one term over here. It could be you know, um, uh, 5x minus 7 equals 12, something like that, you know. So if you have something equals something, then by the addition property of equality or the subtraction property of equality, we can add or subtract the same number on both sides. So in your textbook, it would say then a plus c equals b plus c for the addition property, and then a minus c equals b minus c for the subtraction property, okay? So you guys have seen all of this before. Multiplication property just says we can multiply both sides by the same number. The division property says that we can divide both sides by the same number as long as we're not dividing by zero. Okay, you can't divide by zero. Okay, so it'll always, whenever you have a division or any kind of fraction and there's a variable in the fraction, your textbook should always say something about that variable not equaling zero right there. Okay, so it just can't divide by zero. Okay, the reflexive property in, ge in geometry uh, it's one of the most used properties, you guys. It just says anything equals itself. Here's an example right here. So in this figure right here, can you see there's actually three triangles, but look at the two small triangles, the one on the left and the one on the right. Um, if I split those triangles up right there, we can say BD on this triangle is equal to BD on this triangle, okay? And if you're going to put a congruency symbol, they're going to put segment bars on top, okay? So uh, equal symbol, no segment bars. This just says the measure of BD equals the measure of BD and... Um, or BD, segment BD is congruent to segment BD, okay? By the reflexive property, everything is congruent to itself. And these, to me, are interchangeable. They mean the same thing, okay? So if they go from this to this, or they go from this to this, you just say uh, property of congruency or something like that, okay? That would be good with us with me anyway. Symmetric property, you guys. Symmetric property just says we can flip them around the equal sign. So if A equals B, then B equals A. Okay, and then the transitive property. The transitive property says if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Transitive property, this guy has to be picking up with this guy right there. Okay, so, so as long as the second term of this first um, uh, equals is the first term of the second term, then we can say this guy equals this guy right there, okay? All right, uh, the substitution property is another one that's most used, you guys. So the substitution property just says if A equals B, <coughs> or congruent to B, then A can be substituted in for B and, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, in any equation. Uh, or inequality, you can just substitute it right in, okay? So the transitive property is just a fancy form of substitution. Just remember, if you're using the transitive property, this has to be picked up right here. These two have to be picked up. Um, and if you want to be safe, just say substitution property, because substitution property encompasses all transitive properties. And a lot of textbooks like to be all fancy and say transitive property, whatever, you know. Um, anyway, so the uh, distribution property just says we can distribute that A through the parentheses. So A plus AB plus AC and then AB minus AC, okay, the distributive property. You've seen all of those before. All right, let's try it. So state the property. Okay, what's happening here? These guys are being uh, the 5 and the X. All of a sudden, it's X equals 5. That's called the symmetric property, okay, symmetric property of equality. All right, you can just say symmetric property to me, okay? If A equals B, then 2A equals 2B. Well, here we multiply both sides by 2, multiplication property. Okay, 7 equals 7. Anything equals itself. That's reflexive property, okay? Reflexive property of equality. All right, if A equals B, uh, then A plus 8 equals B plus 8, okay? We just added both 8 to both sides, so the addition property, okay? Uh, that one is easy, hopefully, is distributive property, distribution property, okay? 
If x equals 3 and 3 equals y, then x equals y. Okay, see how this, this guy is picked up right here? That's a transitive property, okay? Transitive property. You can say substitution if you want. I, I would probably let it go. I don't know if your teacher would. Ask him or her about that. Okay, if p equals q and negative 1 equals q, then p equals negative 1. Okay, now... Notice this ends in Q, and it doesn't pick up with Q, so this one is not a transitive property. This one's just a substitution property. We just substituted in um, uh, negative 1 in for that Q right there, okay? Uh, all right, so let's see. If 3x equals 27 and x equals 9, well, there, you divided both sides by 3, so the division property, okay? If A equals B... A minus 17 equals B minus 17. Subtraction property, we subtract it. All right, so it's not all that easy. We're going to get into some proofs here. Okay, so solve the equations, show all steps, and write a justification for each step. Okay, so here we go. We're going to solve this equation, and we're going to write justification. So that means a two-column proof. You betcha. This is where it starts getting fun. I know you love it. Okay, so this always goes first. So we're going to write that right there. That's the given piece that they gave us right there. All right, and there, there's several ways what you can do with this, you guys. I think what I'm going to do is get rid of that one-fifth and multiply both sides by five, okay? So you don't have to write times five times five. You can just write what comes after you multiply by five. So when I multiply this by five, the one-fifth goes away. And you're left with a plus ten. Multiply this by five, we get negative fifteen, okay? Multiplication property, okay? All right, and then what would you do now? You're solving for a, so now we would subtract ten from both sides, so that would be called subtraction property. So there it is. Okay, that's that's what we're doing today. All right, let's try another one. Okay, all right, so a two column proof. Here we go. So there's the given information. Now, again, there's several correct ways to do these proofs. Um, I like to have the very the bigger variable on the left side. So what I'm going to do is just flip them around the equal sign. And when you do that, that is called the symmetric property. S Y M M E T R I C, symmetric property. Okay, now we could uh, add 1.3 to both sides or subtract T from both sides. It doesn't matter. I, I subtracted uh, T from both sides first, okay? So when I subtract T and that makes that go away, when I subtract T from there, I get 2T. All right, now I'm going to add 1.3 to both sides. So that would be called addition property. And then now we're going to divide, okay? So when we divide, we get that. Okay, so this is what it says by justifying, you guys. You're going to write reasons why you can do all of that stuff right there. Alrighty? Alright, so write a justification for each step here. Okay, so here we have a, a geometric figure, and typically, you guys, when you have two pieces giving you a long piece, typically that is. Um, uh, you're going to use the segment addition postulate. This side plus this side equals the whole piece right there. Okay. All right. So here we go. They're going to give you all of that. We'll do one step at a time. I'm just showing you that's what you're going to see on all of that. Okay. Let's do the first one. All right. So HJ plus HI equals IJ. H, H, I'm sorry. HJ, the whole piece, equals HI plus IJ. That is called segment addition postulate. Okay, here was the second one right there. All right, so HJ was 7X minus 3. We just substituted in the value right there, 7X minus 3. And then HI was this 2X plus 6, and here's IJ. So this is just substitution. We just substituted it in. And then the third step, they give you this, okay? This will be given to you this stuff on the left. You'll be given this stuff on the left. And you just got to say what's going on over here. All right, so what do we do here? Let's see, 2x plus 3x is 5x, and then 6 minus 3 is 3. So I don't know where your book came from this. They said substitution property. I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to say simplifying and combining like terms. Okay, that's good enough for me. All right. And then here, um, how'd they get from uh, this statement to this statement? Okay, what they did was is they added 3 to both sides. See if we went plus 3. Plus 3, it gets rid of that and makes that a plus 6, so addition property, okay? And then how did they get to these guys? Okay, so here they subtracted 5x, so this one would be subtraction property, okay? And then here they divided both sides by 2, so division property, okay? So remember, you're going to be given this over here, and you just got to say this part over here. 
All right, let's try another one. I know you'll love it right there. Okay, so given um, uh, that uh, PQ is congruent to QS and QS is congruent to ST, I see a transitive property coming in because these guys are right next to each other. We want to prove that the measure of PQ is equal to the measure of ST. Okay, so here we go. Put down the given stuff right there. Okay, let's use the transitive property. Since these dudes are the same, then I'm going to say this is congruent to this. So segment PQ is congruent to segment ST. Okay, transitive property. All right, and then check this out. We got uh, segment PQ congruent to segment ST, and here it says the measure of PQ equals the measure of ST. That's just definition of congruency, okay? So just say that right there. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, you're going to get some stapled stuff. I think if you're in our class, I know if you're in another teacher's class in mine, you're going to get some practice problems. All right, take care, you guys.